Hi, welcome back. So if you're here, it's because you have an inquiry about the Sephora sale. Um, and I'm gonna make a sale suggestion video for you, even though I myself am probably not gonna be participating in it. I recently bought anything that I had been kind of wanting the past like six months or so, a few months back. Uh, or the products aren't sold at Sephora. So the sale starts for Rouge members on October 28th and you get 20% off. This 20% off isn't guaranteed to everyone. So one of my biggest qualms with the sale, basically you have to spend money to be able to save money later, which you're just spending money. Like that, that's not really a savings if you catch my drift. Sales are designed to make us spend more money than we normally would if we just bought a couple of things not on sale. I'm not saying that all sales are bad. I do participate in some sales, but when you participate in a sale just for the sake that there's a sale, are you really saving? Um, so I would say that at Sephora, if there are a few things like higher end products or luxury items have been calling to you, for quite some time, whether they are like mid-tier to luxury, or if it's a holy grail item that you're almost out of and you're like, yeah, I'll save 15 to 20% depending on my tier, VIB to Rouge. Um, if you're doing the Beauty Insider and you're getting 10% off, like, please don't. Retailers like Credo and Violet Grey, they have really wonderful sales where you do not have to basically spend money to be put on a tier of how much money you can save or how much percent off you can save later. Um, anyway, uh, and also the companies which make these products like Rose Inc or Tower 28 or Urban Decay or Charlotte Tilbury or just anything that you like, these, the actual brands on their websites have sales that are significantly better. Not saying that you shouldn't participate in this sale, but I'm just saying that there are other sales available for you to mindfully spend your money. So let's get into what I would personally recommend you buy if you are choosing to spend your money at the sale. Um, I personally love watching recommendation videos no matter what the sale is, even if it's a brand that I'm not per brand or company that I normally don't buy from, I still like to see what people are into because I think it's fun for people to curate all of their favorites into one video. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. This product I want to mention is surprisingly not the NARS Tendon Moisturizer because I feel like I just, I really talk about that so much and I've been using it for a number of years. I want to recommend the Rose Ink. And this is, what is this called? It's the Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. And this is not a cheap product, so I would recommend buying this when it's on sale. Um, I personally got this when Rose Inc. was having a 25% off site-wide sale, and I don't regret it. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful product. Um, it's super hydrating. It's not as tacky as I thought it would be, um, but that's a good thing. It I'm wearing it today, actually, and I think that it it made my skin look absolutely stunning. Um, I've seen people wear this on one side of their face and the Chanel Le Beige on the other side of their face. Uh, and to me, the Chanel might look a little glassier, but with that, it's probably not as long wearing. Um, and mind you, I'm not talking about the, the, the newer one that has more pigment to it. I'm talking about the older one, the like water thing. Given the makeup hype right now. So people are really into tints, people are into um, skincare meets makeup. I personally don't believe that skincare is going to be working for you if you're wearing it as a limited amount of time as an, and as infrequent as you do makeup. Um, but that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be ingredients in your makeup that don't soothe and moisturize and make your skin feel good when you wear it and when you take it off. Like, your skin shouldn't feel worse. You know what I'm saying? People are super into Chanel base products. And, you know, probably rightfully so. I don't personally own a 
I don't own any of those products by Chanel because I just think, I just deem them too expensive. This is, I don't wanna say it's an exact dupe, but it's going to give you a similar effect. It basically has the same technology to it. Um, and I would say that this is worth picking up if you have a certain percentage off um, and you have been coveting that Chanel product. So for concealer, I would like to recommend the Kosas Revealer Concealer. And it's not a surprise. I'm sure everybody has this in their recommendation videos. I think this is an amazing concealer. Um, it's hydrating. I believe it has either like caffeine or something in it to wake the skin up. Shade range in this is really impressive. I like to use this product blend it out with my fingers, a sponge, a brush, what have you. I think it's radiant and beautiful. Um, I would say that it's a medium coverage. Uh, yeah, but you know, everybody has different opinions on that too. So <laughs> I like to use this in the shade 3.0 warm and 3.2 olive. Blended together on top of some moisturizer. It's a beautiful, dewy, lightweight makeup look. Um, I like to use this all over the face or just for spot concealing. I think this is a really wonderful product. This next product I like to use all over the face as a dewy primer, but it's one of those products that are kind of a hybrid, so eat to each their own. Um, but I can't give a recommendation video without talking about the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless filter. I love this so much. I wear the shade 2 um, when I get a little bit paler and I think that this is an amazing complexion product. I like to wear this on its own underneath makeup on top of makeup as a highlight. I think it gives such a beautiful like either base or highlight just whatever. It has just like the right amount of pigment, the right amount of glow. It just it wears, it's so cosmetically elegant. I always love my complexion when I have this. It's kind of my holy grail um, and it lasts forever. So if you pick this up once during a sale, uh, you're gonna have it for a long time. So segueing from hybrid base highlighting product that that is, um, I want to mention the highlight that I want to recommend. And it is also by Charlotte Tilbury and it's the Beauty Light Wand. I have this in the shade Spotlight. And I think that this is one of those beautiful products that you can either do a beautiful natural glow, like lit within glow, or you can really like amp it up and strobe the shit out of your face with this. Um, it is, the one downside is the packaging. I'm not into the packaging at all. I've never met a person that actually likes this packaging or heard anybody be like, yeah, I don't mind the packaging. Nobody really likes the packaging. You know what I'm saying? Can't not recommend this. Um, it, I would say that it, once it's blended out, it dries down a little bit. Um, so it's not gonna be slipping and sliding all over your makeup. You can put powder products on top of it like I did today. And you can see it just gives such a beautiful glow to the skin. Um, yeah, I, I think this is an amazing product. Okay, so moving on to bronzing contour. So I have more of a contour shade and more of a bronzer shade. Um, they're both cream products. The first one is the Say Sun Melt. I have this in the shade Medium Bronze. This is also uh, something I would recommend over the Chanel uh, cream bronzer that they have. Uh, this is significantly cheaper and you have more shade options. This, you can share this out or you can build it up to be even more pigmented. It has a slight dewy glow. Um, it looks really natural, really beautiful. It's absolutely stunning and you get so much product. Like there's so much product in there. Like, And it's one of the reasons I haven't picked up another cream bronzer in a really long time because there's, this is going to last me so long and I would like to use it up. Next one is the Westman Atelier Contour Stick in the shade Biscuit. This is one of those luxury items that I would not recommend buying unless there is a sale. So this, shade Biscuit is a beautiful contour shade. I'm wearing it today, but it's not too cool toned. 
to where it's going to make your skin look gray in a way. So it's if you're fair complected or um, you want something to be a little bit more chiseled, this is a beautiful, beautiful shade that isn't going to make you look like you're wearing Halloween makeup if you catch my drift. Packaging is very luxe. The price tag is very luxe. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very stellar product and I do deem it worth the money, but it's just even more sweet when you can buy it on sale. You know what I mean? Blushes were, you know, hard for me to narrow down because I just want to, I could just sit all day and talk about blush recommendations, but to give you a more curated type of recommendation list, I chose a powder and a couple of creams. So these are what I would recommend. I'll start with the blush that I'm wearing today, and that is Laura Mercier Fresco. Um, yeah, I think that this is an amazing nudie brown neutral that has a glow to it, but not too metallic. It's very satin, and I have it on top of two of my cream products and a not set base. So as you see, it does not get patchy. It glides onto your face effortlessly. It's such a beautiful color to your skin. It's just a really magical blush. I think Laura Mercier really knows powder products. Um, she also has a powder highlight that I think is very beautiful as well. But I'm not going to recommend that one because there's only one shade, so it's not as accessible. However, the blushes come in so many shades. Fresco just happens to be my favorite. Before it went viral, it went viral like a year ago or something, and it was just nowhere, but I loved it before it went viral, okay? So next is Toilet Seat <laughs> Rose Ink. Uh, I love the Rose Ink blushes. This particular one is in the shade Foxglove. It is such a beautiful sun-kissed, mm, it's the formula of this is just so delicious. That's the only way I can really describe it is that it's just delicious. It's so buttery, so pigmented, but not too pigmented. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not an intimidating product. Um, I, I think it's just, it's cosmetically elegant and that's all I can really ask for in a product like this. It's just absolutely stunning. I love it so much. I cannot recommend these blushes enough. The nude stick blushes. Now, before I continue, I just wanna say that all three of these brands for these blushes, so Laura Mercier, Rose Ink, and Nude Sticks, all have like really impressive sales throughout the year. Um, I would say that they're 20 to 30% off. And so you're saving a lot of money. I don't wanna say a lot of money, but you're saving a significant amount of money and they don't require you to be like a member or on a, some type of like tier list for how much money you've spent with them over the years. You know what I mean? Like, it, you don't have to prove yourself to be able to be rewarded with a certain percentage off. These are their matte blushes. So I'm not really like a matte girl, um, but this formula, I they are matte, but they have this really beautiful ability to effortlessly blend out onto your skin and create the same, mm, how do I put it, like texture that your skin is. <laughs> it's a skin-like texture, is that the word? It's very skin-like, it's very beautiful. These two are my favorite two shades. This is the shade Sunkissed. It's a very like bronzy nude. Um, it, I think this might be one of my favorite blushes ever. I do think that it actually is very similar to the shade Foxglove by Rose Ink. And the next one is uh, a little bit lighter, but also um, it's, I would say that this is a little less bronzy and a little bit more neutral. On camera, it probably looks identical, but uh, this is in the shade In the Nude. Also a matte, um, and I think this like the Laura Mercier Fresco is a perfect type of like brownie neutral where you can wear this with any other like eye lip combo and it's not going to take away from kind of the stars of the show without being lackluster itself. It's just absolutely incredible. These are amazing to travel with. They come with brushes on the end but you can take them off because 
I don't like them. I don't think anybody likes them, but uh, just to let you know that if you don't like to buy things with brushes on the end, you can just, you know, toss it. <laughs> Those are my blush recommendations. Cool. This lighting right now has me looking so pale. It's it's starting to be fall here, finally, and it's gray. It's very gray. It's very gloomy, very sad. Now on to eyes. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is a mascara that is actually very new to me, but I... I'm in love with it. I'm in love with it so much. Um, my other favorite mask, my two other favorite mascaras are not sold at Sephora, so um, I can't recommend them. But I will recommend the new Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. I This is very new on the market, so it's very new in my collection, but I fell instantly in love with it. I think it was like the first time I used it, I was like, whoa. And then the second time I used it, I was like, is this my new favorite mascara? Um, yeah, it's, I think it's absolutely incredible. You can really build it up, uh, without it getting clumpy. People who have, uh, very straight eyelashes, um, or eyelashes that do not hold a curl say that this holds the curl in their eyelash. Um, I don't personally have that problem. I sometimes curl my lashes before I put on mascara, but I never curl them before I put on this and they just stick straight up. It's absolutely incredible. And it washes off so effortlessly. That's my number one thing in a mascara is how hard is it to take off, which is why I really prefer tubing mascaras. But this is not a tubing mascara, surprisingly. So um, yeah, I, I highly recommend this and it's not, that expensive. For it being a mascara at Sephora, which makeup has gotten so expensive the past couple years, like it's absolutely insane. Um, so I say like get a discount wherever you can take it. This is I believe $20. Uh, I think it's $20. Um, so if you can get it on a discount for something that already isn't super expensive for being at Sephora, I would say take it, that it is totally worth it. So I wanna talk about the shadow that is on my lids today. The easiest shadow to apply. Ultimate one and done. It's the Urban Decay Moon Dust Shadow. I think this is just, like nobody can really get on this girl's level. Like it is just, absolutely stunning. It's so stunning. It has this kind of beige base pigment to it that's still a little transparent and the shimmers in it are like purple and silver and they're so finely milled that it just refracts like the sun on water. It's just, it is, it's the ultimate wet looking eyeshadow and you put this on top of anything and it'll give you a wet looking effect. One of my favorite things to do is to put this on top of like a, any type of cream eyeshadow and kind of set them with this and your eyes just look so emollient, so wet, so amazing. And it's a powder too, so it's not gonna crease. If you have the problem with cream eyeshadows and they crease on you or you don't just, you just don't like them, you don't find them very user friendly, you know, like with all makeup to each their own. I'm not gonna judge anybody for not loving the same things I do. This sits on top of other shadows beautifully. It's just, I just like wanna scream from the, the mountaintops for everyone to own this because it's just, Wow, it's it's so good. I love the shadow so much. Next is a luxury item. So um, one thing I wouldn't really recommend from Tom Ford is the quads, even though it made like the Allure best in beauty list for some reason. Um, I wouldn't say that those are even worth it after the sale. Not that they're bad shadows, they're beautiful shadows, but I think that they're just too expensive even after a sale. These, however, still expensive, still <laughs> abhorrently expensive. I think there's like 60 something dollars for this. But if you were in uh, the Rouge, you get 20% off. And then if you're VIB, you get 15% off. And if this is the only thing you're buying, then more power to you. I would say go for it. Um, these are the cream and powder 
Yeah, cream and powder eye color. Um, so you get a powder topper on the top and a very beautiful cream shadow on the bottom. So it's like two in one and you can wear them apart or together um, to make a variety of looks. This is in the shade Golden Peach and they also have a bronze one as well that I own. Um, this one's just my personal favorite so I thought I would recommend this. It's very daytime appropriate and um, it's very wet looking on the eyes. The topper shade is very similar in the way that it looks very wet and kind of ethereal. Uh, similarly to the Moon Dust eyeshadow by Urban Decay, where it's very scattered, very um, grown up, I would say, is a really good way to describe it. This eyeshadow do is very grown up looking on the eyes. Cream is just stunning. Like, it's really, really stunning. It's a stunning eyeshadow. Um, yeah, if you're going to be spending money on a Tom Ford eye product, or just a Tom Ford product in general, I would say uh, the duos here are what I would personally recommend. Last is another Charlotte Tilbury product, and this is the Eyes to Mesmerize formula. This is such a beautiful cream formula. Interestingly enough, Charlotte Tilbury, when she was like the head of makeup at Tom Ford, she developed the formula for these. So you can see they are similar in their quality and performance, in my opinion. This is in the shade Oyster Pearl. I also recently got the shade Exaggerize, uh, which is <laughs> so beautiful. But this one is the taupey sister to that. Uh, it's just one of the most beautiful eyeshadows I've ever used. It's this kind of beigey taupe with kind of a silverish shift. One of my favorite ways to wear this is blended all over the lid very sheerly and then on top putting Space Cowboy. Oh, it's so wet looking and so beautiful. I love it so much. Um, I think this is a beautiful formula. You can get a variety of different looks and effects with other shadows by using this. Um, it's absolutely stunning. I love it so much. So before I forget, I would love to recommend something at the sale that even I myself might pick a few up, and that is anything from the Sephora brand itself. So the Sephora brand is significantly cheaper than anything else at the store. It's 30% off the entire sale, no matter what your tier is. My favorite things from the Sephora brand are their brushes. So this is one of the many that I own. This is the Pro Foundation number 47. Yes, it's the 47. It's so soft, it's so perfect, like it's good for com any complexion products, powder, cream, what have you. I think it's amazing, it really hugs your face, like it's so soft. I love their brushes. Okay, so now moving on to lips. We'll start with the lip liner that I'm wearing today, and basically the only lip liner that I'm gonna recommend. This is my personal opinion. Uh, I don't think that you should be spending your money on lip liners. like just buy them at the buy them at the drugstore you know like the, it's a lip liner I, I it's just like not something that I'm I really uh condone all that much even though I do own some high-end and some luxury lip liners um I think my lip liners that I use from the drugstore are just as high performing and nuanced as lip liners that I have bought at Sephora or what have you. But what I will recommend if you are interested in a higher tier lip liner is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. I have this in the shade Iconic Nude. This is basically my lips but better. Um, and it's absolutely amazing. It's a classic wooden pencil you can sharpen, you need a sharpener. Um, and it's that perfect like nudie brown beige uh, with just a t enough hint of pink for it to not pull too warm or cool toned. It's the perfect like nudie brown neutral. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's my lips but better. I love this so much. Um, however, if you have ever used the NYX 
lip liner in the shade natural they're more or less the same shade and i believe that's oh god i don't know how much it is i think it's like a dollar 99 or something like that anyways you can buy it significantly cheaper this is not the most expensive but it's still expensive for a lip liner so but what i would say is that if you're going to pick one that this is my personal favorite and what i would recommend with the changing of the seasons my lips have been so chapped so i have been wearing nothing but balms uh i'll talk about what I have been wearing on my lips today, and this is the Dior Lip Glow in the shade Mahogany. Um, I don't recommend this shade in particular, it's just the formula that I think is absolutely amazing. The pigmentation is uh, sheer but buildable, so you can get like a really glowy, intense look with this, or you can just have a bitten kind of tint the way I am wearing today. This is a beautiful formula, it's super nourishing. It has kind of a, a sweet mint smell to it, but it's not overpowering or tingly at all. I think that it's a very lovely formula and the hype with this in the past has been worth it. Uh, and also the packaging is very, very luxe. Like it's hearty as hell. Um, yeah, uh, do I think that you need to run out and buy this? No, but it's what I would recommend if you are looking at a higher tier if luxury brand for some type of lip product. I think that the Dior lip glows are absolutely stunning and that if you are to buy them, buy them on sale, I think is what I'm trying to say. If you're gonna buy them, buy them on sale. Next is my favorite bullet lipstick at the moment and this is the Merit Lipstick. Um, I think this is the perfect blend of sheerness with buildability. Uh, it doesn't dry out my lips at all. Um, if anything, it's a little emollient. Um, it has kind of a waxy texture to it. I have this in the shade Slip, which is a kind of neutral brown. Um, and it's, it's very lovely. The packaging is very luxurious. Um, it's just, it aesthetically is very me. The color is very me. Um, yeah, I think this is, my, this is my favorite product from Merit because I have found with more use my lip oil, which I would not really recommend uh, purchasing because it, it has no nourishment and it has no longevity. If it had one or the other, I think I would recommend it because I do love the shade I have. I have the shade Taupe, but it doesn't, provide any type of like moisture nourishment for me. And also their blush, uh, it's the same thing. It, it, it makes my skin feel nice, but it's gone within like a half hour. So it just feels like a waste of time to apply it sometimes, even though I love the color. I have the color terracotta. It's a very like, you know, like brown theme that I go with, you know what I mean? But, and, but this, it lasts and it makes my lips feel good. I strongly recommend this. And lastly is a product from NARS. Surprisingly, it's not the sheer lip balms that I'm constantly talking about. Um, even though I would recommend those, like just, you know, they're just amazing, but they are kind of expensive. You know, for a lip tint, they're pretty expensive, just like the Dior. Like if you're gonna buy them, buy them on sale. What I'm gonna recommend though is the NARS Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm. I have this in the shade Intimate and it's that beautiful, neutral, nudie brown with just the slightest hint of pink and it's, Smells like vanilla, like the MAC lipstick, bullet lipsticks. Um, this does not get crusty. This, I wouldn't say that it's super nourishing or anything because it's matte. I, and I don't really agree that this is a lip balm, but um, you can have wear the sheer and build it up as much as you desire without it getting kind of gross. I don't know. I think it's a very beautiful formula. I highly recommend these. They used to be limited edition, but Everyone loved them so much that NARS made them permanent. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I think they came out like last year or something. But um, this is one of my favorite lip products ever. 
And yeah, that's what I would recommend. Okay, so that is it for today. Those are all of my recommendations. Let me know if like what you're going to be picking up or if any of these um, are on your list. Remember to try to not spend more than what is within your means or what you even really need. Uh, but yeah, uh, those are my recommendations for the Sephora holiday sale. And uh, bye!